I am honored today to address the World Government Summit on the critical issue of the future of multilateralism and the role of the United Nations. This summit is a unique platform to discuss current shortfalls and future perspectives of governance. As the President of the United Nations General Assembly, I highly value this space and the efforts of the host country to enhance international cooperation and foster dialogue on the critical challenges for building a fairer international order. This recognition of the importance of international cooperation and multilateralism to our present and our future is particularly relevant in a world of rapid change and even greater interdependence. That is why I chose as the theme for the 73rd session of the General Assembly, making the United Nations relevant to all people, global leadership and shared responsibilities for peaceful, equitable, and sustainable societies. The United Nations is at the heart of multilateralism and the vision for a world that responds to the hopes and aspirations of all people, a world that leaves no one behind. This summit presents an opportunity to reflect on how we are delivering on that promise and to collectively identify keys for enhanced action. Excellencies and dear friends, we live in a world of paradoxes. It is true that globalization, new technologies, and digitization have contributed to monumental, unprecedented human progress, including in poverty reduction, well-being, and wider access to knowledge. However, current development models have multiplied inequalities within and between countries. Exclusion and disempowerment are becoming pervasive, causing many to feel insecure about their present and their future. In other words, the gap between our knowledge and our ability to act, to address, to solve, often falls far too short. This disconnect between expectations and institutional and political responses fuels distrust for both national and international systems. This uncertainty, this fear about the future has found a mirage in unilateralism, exacerbated nationalism, isolationism. Yet we know that no country, regardless of size or, or sphere of influence, can alone face the devastating effects of climate change of terrorism or of human trafficking to cite only a few. Climate change, as we all know, is an existential threat. The Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change has warned us that we have just 12 years for global warming to be kept to a maximum 1.5 degrees Celsius, beyond which even half of a degree will significantly worsen the risk of drought extreme heat and poverty for hundreds of millions of people. The scale of the refugee crisis has reached levels not seen since the Second World War, as tens of millions of people have been forced out of their homes. The great challenge of migration is being exploited in some circles to create mistrust and xenophobia. Geopolitical tensions are on the rise and conflicts in Africa, the Middle East, and other parts of the world continue to claim deaths and destruction. Terrorism spares no nation. Millions of people still live below the poverty line and millions of children, especially girls, have no access to school. The concentration of wealth in the hands of few is provoking further marginalization frustration and despair. The richest 1% collected 82% of the wealth created last year, while the poorest half of humanity got nothing. That's the kind of divide we are facing. 
In light of this very convoluted scenario, I would like to address two questions today. First, has multilateralism and the United Nations failed to address these threats and challenges? I personally do not think so. I deeply believe in the universal values and principles enshrined in the Charter of the United Nations. I am convinced that international corporations and a rules-based order is the right and only way to address global challenges and shape our common future. The global architecture we put in place during previous decades was meant to spare humanity from the scourge of war and avoid a major world conflict. It was also supposed to promote prosperity and protect human rights. When we look retrospectively at the United Nations, we should feel proud of its accomplishments. Those achievements are undeniable. We succeeded in laying a solid ground for international cooperation. We have established universal norms and agreements covering all aspects of political, economic, and social life. The United Nations was at the origin of the Universal Declaration of Human Rights 70 years ago, as well as all conventions and other instruments governing all aspects of development, peace, and human dignity. The United Nations has successfully put in place a universal, inclusive, and ambitious plan, the 2030 Agenda for Sustainable Development, with 17 goals and a set of targets and indicators. It is, indeed, a global roadmap for the future we want. The Paris Agreement on Climate Change, for its part, is one of the resounding successes of multilateralism. The organization has contributed greatly to promote the peaceful settlement of disputes through mediation, conflict prevention, peacekeeping, peace building, and sustaining peace. Through its presence on the ground around the world, the UN strives to improve people's lives, including by providing humanitarian assistance to countries affected by conflict and disasters. Peacekeepers and humanitarian personnel risk their lives to protect and assist civilians in precarious conditions. Despite all these achievements, multilateralism and the United Nations are viewed with, with, with skepticism by some. And recent landmark agreements, such as the Paris Agreement and the Global Compact on Migration, have found dissidents. This brings me to my second question. Is this global architecture still fit for purpose? If we did not have the United Nations, what kind of international governments would we have put in place today? This is the question we need to address if our aims is to have a United Nations that is able to adapt to new realities and is relevant for the people it serves. In my view, there are three areas where we need to improve our performance and the way we deliver. First, we need to recharge and rejuvenate our narrative to make the case and reassert a vision that builds on the achievements of the past 73 years while focusing on future perspectives and emerging challenges. We need to be closer to the people to society, to youth, to the private sector, to media, to academia, in order to strengthen public support, greater ownership from society as a whole in the work we do. We must improve the way we communicate. We need to win the communication battle, both through mass and social media. We all, as leaders of government, business, civil society, share a responsibility in this regard. Collective action and global leadership are critical to overcome current hurdles of an international rules-based system. Effective multilateralism is not an option. It is a necessity. Second, we need an organization that privileges the underprivileged. 
a world where nearly 783 million people live below poverty line is unjust. A world where more than 262 million children, among which 130 million girls, still do not have access to school is unequitable. A world where women continue to be paid approximately 20% less than men globally is discriminatory. The 2030 Agenda for Sustainable Development is a survival kit, a blueprint for action. We must honor the pledge we made that no one will be left behind. Improving people's well-being, offering decent jobs, eradicating poverty, in sum, building a more sustainable and peaceful future for all. Three years after its adoption, we have certainly made some progress, but reports show that we are far behind our commitments, especially in developing countries. It is about scaling up funding, improving institutional capacity, making the right policy choices, and I agree, it is not always easy to do. The high-level political forum, which will be convened this year for the first time under the auspices of the General Assembly, offers a unique opportunity to take stock and speed up our efforts. We need to recommit to the promises we made three years ago with the SDGs and the Paris Agreement and its program of work. Third, we need a UN that is efficient, effective, action-oriented and based on results. Our resources and time are limited and the needs are constantly growing. We all recognize that our multilateral institutions could and should work better, that they must be reformed so they can deliver in partnership with all actors. Governments cannot deliver if it's not in partnership with other stakeholders from business to civil society organizations, from regional organizations to local governments. Undoubtedly, they all play an increasingly important role in global governance. New alliances and innovative partnerships can help to achieve tangible outcomes. Increased efforts on South-South cooperation on alliances between cities and on regional development arrangements are also laudable. The Global Fund to Fight HIV AIDS, for example, tuberculosis and malaria, is one example of a multi-partner initiative that has achieved significant impact. The landmark agreements on landmines and cluster munitions were forged together with NGOs playing a key role Businesses and the scientific community were instrumental to the creation of the Montreal Protocol on the ozone layer. And here, just a word of caution. New alliances are much needed, but they cannot and should not replace the rules-based international system and the critical role of governments themselves. Our challenge is to strengthen multilateralism and ensure it is flexible and innovative. For its part, the General Assembly, the Parliament of Humanity, is undertaking a very vibrant process of revitalization with the aim of improving its working methods. We are striving to streamline our agendas and to devote more time to assess implementation of resolutions to ensure quality and impact in our normative work. The other key issue is Security Council reform. This is very critical and complex process. There is a broad agreement that the current composition of the Council, established at the end of the World War II, no longer reflects the political realities of the world and that its reform would reinforce multilateralism and contribute to a more democratic and effective global, uh, global governance system. The UN and its executive, under the leadership of the Secretary General, is also undergoing a profound reform that was negotiated by member states for two years. And today, we have the great opportunity to have it touch ground, 
to transform and improve our capacity to deliver, to be less bureaucratic and more effective, closer to the people, more accountable and more transparent. And more transparent. Excellencies, I would like to make a final point. Technological change is fundamentally transforming our lives, livelihoods, and pros prospects for the future. The fourth industrial revolution and innovation are the driving forces shaping the way we live and interact. We need to get their governance right. This means adapting our national and global governance to those new and rapid changes. We need to make sure that the dividends are inclusive enough and shared by all. I encourage you to be a part of this collective effort. Excellencies, dear friends, as president of the UN General Assembly, my role is to make the case for multilateralism as an irreplaceable form of governance. It is a case that I make passionately. It is a case that should make itself Every analysis based on sound evidence shows that we need more, not less, cooperation. But we must also do more to ensure that our multilateral institutions work better. Let me end with a quote from the founding father of the United Arab Emirates, His Highness Sheikh Zayed bin Sultan Al Nayan. And I quote, past years have emphasized the importance of unity as a vital necessity for providing a better life to the people, for ensuring stability in the country, and for realizing the hopes and aspirations of our people." End of quote. At this time of hardship, we need to be stronger and more united. We need to be creative and assertive. We need to think and act collectively. We must follow the message of fraternity brought to us recently by Pope Francis and the Grand Imam this past week at the global level. We need a United Nations and an international community custom made for our dreams, especially for the dreams of the ones in need. I thank you for your attention. Shukran.